What is it about head kicks in this building? I don't know what to tell. Are we cussing up here tonight, gentlemen? No, I mean, no we are. You <laughs> gotta be kidding me with this fight tonight. Absolutely incredible. But I do believe anybody who watched the evolution of Justin Gaethje was not blind to the fact that he could do this tonight. Maybe not as spectacularly as he did it, but he built financial success in large part by being the most exciting fighter in mixed martial arts, but the pivot needed to happen. I think it happened at an opportune time only three fights into his UFC career. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize his third UFC fight came against Dustin Poirier. Totally different guy now and uh, couldn't happen to a better dude nor a better team. Well, from what we just heard from Justin Gaethje, as I said earlier, his intentions are very clear. He wants that undisputed title at 155 pounds, but clearly he's got to wait because we got a fight coming up in October in Abu Dhabi. Uh, that fight will determine maybe who Gaethje gets. Because as it looks right now, John, you would say Gaethje should get the winner of that bout in Abu Dhabi. Yes, and knowing Justin the way we all do, he is going to bide his time, he is going to idle, and he is going to wait because this is all he cares about, right? He's got two belts now at home. He has a UFC interim championship and a BMF belt, and candidly, he doesn't necessarily want either one of them. It's so, true. yes, I think that Alexander Volkanovsky is going to have a hard time with this result because I think it pushes any potential rematch between his, him and Islam Akashev to the back burner, at least in my opinion. And, John, you made poetry out of that with no curse words, okay? You <laughs> underestimated yourself. Now, I got to tell you, I'm going a step ahead. I'm not positive that Charles Oliveira wants to do that fight. I'm not trying to be a spoiler, but I read his Twitter account. He says he wants to fight Conor McGregor next, and the only reason and I bring that to you, we now at a minimum have a backup, right? We thought that Justin Gaethje or Pori, whoever came out, would likely be a number one contender, but we also thought they'd be hurt. We thought this was going to be a bludgeoning. We thought they were going to be swapping stories in the hospital. This was a surprise finish. He's surprisingly fresh. I'm talking about Gaethje. I think he's ready to go in. And by the way, if Justin happens to see this, I am so impressed with his ability to continue to have grit. He came off of Fitzayev, which was supposed to be the shining up of Fitzayev and the passing of the torch. Right. He calls for this fight. Who calls for a fight with Justin Pori? Then he comes out of it and he calls for the uh, the only guy that's a bigger killer than Dustin? Come on, man. This guy is as real as they come. Yo, I totally agree with Shell. I think that the Charles Oliveira uh, Makachev fight was made because nobody thought that he, whoever won this fight was yeah. not going to make a quick turn to go back. And everyone knows, it, like, like John alluded to, that. You know, Gaethje doesn't like short notice fights. He likes lots of time to yeah. prepare. He likes lots of rest. Um, I think that if the matchmakers would have known that this may possibly be the result, I think that they may have waited a little bit longer to match that Oliveira fight. Either way, whatever happens in Abu Dhabi sets us up for a, another spectacular matchup at 155 pounds. It's just further indication of how deep that division is here in the UFC. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.